Good morning, church. My brothers and sisters at Emmanuel and our sister church at St. Philip's, I greet you in the name of the Lord. Let's start our service by saying, The Lord be with you and also with you. Praise the Lord, praising your servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name now and forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Penitence. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments, on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. A moment of silence as we confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in peace with our neighbors. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, in word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. We claim together the forgiveness of sins. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today, generous God, you nourish us with the word of life and the bread of blessing. Strengthen us to live conf confidently in your goodness, facing our fears and sharing our bread. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. We pray for the coronavirus, regarding the coronavirus. Merciful God, we pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus. Bring comfort to those grieving for loved ones lost and those loved ones died. Give peace to those who are worried, fearful and uncertain as the virus spreads. We pray for governments and authorities who are seeking to find solutions to contain and deal with the spread of the virus. Protect, protect those in the health service who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Christ. Amen. A reading from 2 Samuel chapter 11, reading from verses 1 to 15. The following spring, at the time of the year when kings usually go to war, David sent out Joab with his officers and the Israelite army. They defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabbah. But David himself stayed in Jerusalem. One day, late in the afternoon, David got up from his nap and went to the palace roof. As he walked about up there, he saw a woman having a bath. 
She was very beautiful. So he sent a messenger to find out who she was and learned that she was Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. David sent messengers to fetch her. They brought her to him and he made love to her. She had just finished her monthly ritual of purification. Then she went back home. Afterwards, she discovered that she was pregnant and sent a message to David to tell him. David sent a message to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent him to David. When Uriah arrived, David asked him if Joab and the troops were all well and how the fighting was going. Then he said to Uriah, Go home and rest a while. Uriah left and David sent a present to his home. But Uriah did not go home. Instead, he slept at the palace gate with the king's guards. When David heard that Uriah had not gone home, he asked him, You have just returned from a long absence. Why didn't you go home? Uriah answered, The men of Israel and Judea are away at the wall, and the covenant box is with them. My commander Joab and his officers are camping out in the open. How could I go home, eat and drink, and sleep with my wife? By all that sacred, I swear that I could never do such a thing. So David said, Then stay here the rest of the day and tomorrow. I'll send you back. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem with that day and the next. David invited him to supper and made him drunk. But again that night, Uriah did not go home. Instead, he slept on his blanket in the palace guard room. The next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by Uriah. He wrote, Put Uriah in the front line where the fighting is heaviest. Then retreat and let him be killed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, reading verses 14 to 21. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. And when Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as darkness fell and Jesus still hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake to Capernaum. Soon a gale swept down upon them and the sea grew rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. They were terrified, but he called out to them, Don't be afraid, I am here. Then they were eager to let him in the boat, and immediately they arrived at their destination. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Beloved, as we come to the opening of the scripture, and we will preach this morning by the grace of God on the reading from the gospel, taking verses 14 to 21. The story is told of a particular young man who had issues, various issues, and having difficulty in trying to solve them or coming to terms with them. Problems was just coming up in his life. And he was advised to go and see this particular psychologist, psychiatrist. 
and he went to see this young man, this psychologist, and they were in the room, very solemn, lovely, soft music playing. And the psychiatrist said to him, young man, I want you to imagine yourself in a boat. And suddenly a wind comes up, a great wind. And the wind pushes you from the port side. What do you do? He said, um, I'll throw at the port anchor. He said, well, good. And then suddenly the wind changes and the wind now comes from the starboard side. And you back him. What do you do? He said, well, I, I, I throw out the, 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 the starboard anchor. And the, the psychiatrist looked at the young man and said, cool. And suddenly, aft, the, 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 the wind is lifting the ship from aft. He said, I'll throw out the aft anchor. And they said, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Where do you get all these anchors from? He said, sir, from the very same place you get all your winds from. Beloved, the story I would love to latch on this morning is the encounter with Jesus and the disciples in the boat. This story is preceded by the feeding of the 5,000. Crowds have come to listen and hear the story of Jesus. Approximately 5,000. And as it happened, the disciple says, Lord, it's a lot of people. You better send them away. They need to be fed. We don't have enough money to feed them. And Jesus in the story tells him, you feed them. They did not understand. Jesus performs the miracle of the five, five, loaves, and two fish, five loaves and two fishes. Everybody is fed. And now the disciples find themselves in a boat. Find themselves in a boat. And I love the King James Version um, as it explains the manner in which they find themselves. It says, the wind against them were contrary. Nothing that they did was getting them anywhere. Setting and resetting the sails didn't work. Rowing didn't work. Throwing the water out of the boat didn't work. Then the Bible tells us Jesus comes to them on the water. In one of the other versions it says they see him, but they think him to be a ghost. I don't know about you, but if I have already got myself in this situation and I see someone or something that doesn't look right coming to me, I think without the miracle I would have gotten out and ran on the water. But the disciples find themselves in the water. And I want to begin my talk by totally and a little bit confusing you. I want to hear you understand that Jesus is going to tell them what he is not telling them what he told them. Jesus is going to tell them what he's not telling them, what he told them. The disciples are roaming like crazy and nothing is working. And Jesus comes and Jesus says, I am here. I am here. The context in which I want to speak this morning 
is Jesus is saying, I am here. Not I am here on the water with you. He's wanting to say, I am here. We know these stories and the phrases of the I am's of Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is wanting them to understand that I am Yahweh is here with you. Do not be afraid. Jesus is wanting to, to take them back to when the I am began. And we go back to the book of Exodus where Moses is standing with Jesus in front of the burning bush and he says to him, Lord, you you asking me to go to Pharaoh and to the Israelites and you're telling me that you said, what must I tell them if they ask me, who sent you? Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me. Say to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent you. This is my eternal name. I am to be remembered for all generations. And God was saying to the disciples there that on, on, on the water, on the sea, I, I don't know where the God climbed into the boat yet. And he was saying to them, I am. I am here. Do not be afraid. I, 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 I want to go take you back a little bit to one of the other gospel readings about Peter. Peter sees Jesus and he says, Lord, if it is you, let me come to you on the water. And all Jesus says is come. He didn't say, Peter, come. He said, come. And Peter got out of the boat. And Peter walks to Jesus. Now I'm going to try and kind of paraphrase and pick up Peter's take on this. As Peter gets out of the boat and Peter walks on the water, Peter turns around to the disciples. I bet you croonies wish they'd gotten out of the boat and walk with me on the water. Look, I walked on water. And the reason I believe Peter said that they did not get out of the boat. And when Peter turns back to Jesus and he sees the waves, he panics. And at that moment Jesus says to him, Oh, he of little faith. Oh, he of little faith. And Peter sinks, Lord, help. And Jesus pulls Peter up. And for the second time, Peter walks back with Jesus into the boat. A little take on that. Jesus did not say, Peter, come. Jesus' invitation was open to all of the disciples at that time. Come. And I believe that calling is still the same today. Jesus' calling is to each and every one of us.
beloved, right here, right now, today, we find ourselves in various boats. And the winds and the waves are beating against our boats. And Jesus is wanting you and I to hear him say to us today, I am here. Not necessarily where you are. Our God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. But he's wanting us to hear him say this morning, I am here. I am here. I am. I am the one who says, I am the bread of light. The one who says, I am the light of the world. The one who says, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, I am the truth and I am the life. I am the great vine and my father is the gardener. I am Yahweh. The God of Isaac, the God of Abram, and the God of Jacob. Many things change. I have not changed. I am here. Who do you and I invite into our boats this morning? Day I say this morning, as a nation, as a country, as South Africans, we have witnessed what could have been a very, very devastating storm. God is saying to you this morning, and He's saying to me this morning. I am here. Whatever the answer is that you need, I am here. God is saying, as he said to Peter, Peter, I have seen an invitation to all in the boat to come. And this morning he is saying that invitation is as open today as what it was then. You come in your natural humanly state as what you can. And I will do the supernatural. And why I say that, it is linked to why I believe Peter sank. When Peter got out of the boat, when Peter got out of the boat to walk to Jesus, uh, his natural instinct of, we call it spiritual pride, or human pride, he got out and almost as if he laughed. But Jesus, being Jesus, did what Jesus does best. He loves. And beloved is calling you this morning and is calling me this morning to come as I am naturally and he will do what needs to be done the supernatural the Bible doesn't say the storm was called the Bible says when Jesus got into the boat immediately they were where they were going to Something supernatural, it's, 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 it's in there, it's in there. 
but it needs to be read and understood with this spiritual eye. I'm not claiming that I'm there. I'm not claiming that I'm God's gift to mankind. I have my mistakes. I have my faults. But I have come to realize that when you ask of Jesus, He gives. In fact, the word said, I heard it yesterday, if and when you pray, believing that you have it, you have it. When we pray, it's not a matter of waiting for it to happen. When you pray, you have it. I need to conclude. I need to conclude. Say to the people, I am who I am. And God is saying to you and to me this morning, I am who I am. Say to the people, say to the people of Israel, I am have sent you. Say to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent you. This is my eternal name. I am to be remembered for all generations. Jesus is saying to you and to me this morning, Call on my name. Father, we thank you that your ear is not too deaf and your hand and your arm is not too short to heal. We, your people, call on you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, having heard your word, we pray to you, the great I am, God and creator of all that is in heaven and on earth. We pray that from your glorious, unlimited resources, you will empower us with inner strength through your spirit. Come, Lord, and make your home in our hearts as we put our trust in you. May our roots grow deeply into your love and continually strengthen us. Empower us as God's people, God's church, and God's chosen nation to understand as you call us to try and to grasp how long, how high, how deep, and how wide your love is for all of us. May we experience your love, even though it might be too greatly to fully understand. May we understand that your love and concern for us is being made complete by your infinite power and authority at work in us. Lord, because you know our needs, we ask in your name that you meet each and every one of us according to our individual needs. If you present yourself our Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Where there is lack, our Jehovah Jireh, the provider. When we fear and doubt the unknown, our Jehovah Shama, the ever-present God. When we are lost, seeking guidance, our Jehovah Ra, the Good Shepherd. Father, we give you all the honor praise and glory for the privilege of being able to avail ourselves for your service by means of your mighty power at work in us. 
to you and you alone to receive all the glory, all the honor, all the praise in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this celebration of your Holy Church and gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together they may give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray in the language of our choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is it not a sharing of the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, 
whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. So receive the bread, the body of Jesus Christ broken for you, and the blood shed for you. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. We pray together, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, Heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you and those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.